Hey, how you doing? So this is Phil. He makes videos assessing the use of pitch correction in things like live performances, online recordings, and TV broadcasts. In this video, I want to explore some of the interesting questions that arise from Phil's videos and consider how the temptation to reach for uh, the proverbial pitch corrector uh, in life makes our creative voice feel a bit less vulnerable when sharing it with the world. When we have access to tools that can help scrape off imperfections, conceal wobbles of passion, and help us squeeze more accurately onto the lines and into the boxes of societal expectations, we're likely to use them because the opposite is pretty scary. Um, and so in many of his videos, Phil isolates vocals from live performances, recordings, TV broadcasts, runs them through a vocal pitch monitor, um, which he uses to essentially analyze where vocals sit on the lines on the standard tuning musical scale um, and assesses whether or not pitch correction has been applied to that performance. In one video called I Really Don't Know What to Think About Music Anymore, Phil looks at the trend where people essentially kind of film themselves singing in their bedrooms. A very simple idea uh, makes it look like a one take um, situation with one camera, um, just wow everybody with this raw, exceptional talent. But the problem with these sorts of videos is presented as a live performance. It's not just a backdrop on which somebody is sort of presenting themselves. There's also the element that they want the audience to believe that they are doing something that they're not. And when a pre-recorded pitch corrected vocal is shared on social media with captions like, OMG, this vocal will blow your mind. And this amazing performance just broke the internet. We're being sold a bit of a cheeky untruth. And I think the concerning thing about this sort of trend is it potentially contributes to a growing cynicism about what we hear and what we see. It sort of asks questions like, is anything authentic? The things that we think we're hearing and seeing, are they actually real? Okay, so this is a strange one. It's a vocal coach who's marketing her singing training courses and teaching with videos of vocal exercises aimed at um, helping people learn to sing and improve their voice. Uh, but her voice on these training videos is pitch corrected and essentially setting an impossible standard that cannot be emulated by a human voice. The video that rocked me to my core, right, that's maybe putting it a little bit too strongly, um, but it was this performance by Charlie Puth. To be fair to him, Charlie is very open about using auto-tune and pitch correction in everything that he does. He says, well, you know, everyone's using it, so why would he not? Um, which is a line of reasoning you can take. Like, it's not necessarily true that everyone is using it. In fact, it's not. As Phil shows in many of his videos, actually, it's demonstrably untrue that everyone is using it um, because many people don't use it. But at least he's transparent about the fact um, he is using it. Phil... Uh, in one of his videos, shares a, shares footage from a stadium gig that Charlie Puth um, did, during which he pretended to write a song with his band off the cuff in front of this this huge audience. Uh, he begins by saying he doesn't know how this is going to end up, and then pretends that he's got this song brewing inside him, and he's like, "Right, I can. Let's just pretend like we're in the studio. I've let's get a snare drum going." And he asks the bassist to add a a, a bass line, comes up with a keyboard riff. Directs the drums to drop out. Hey, take the drums out. Hey. And then suddenly there's this pre recorded vocal that comes in uh, that comes to the front of the mix. And there's this, like, yeah. And then the song kicks in. There's this doubled vocal that has obviously been pre recorded. Try something. Yeah. I got my hand, got up and ran out to the park. His live voice sort of disappears into the back. Uh, the band knows the entire arrangement of this song. There's a significant chord change that everybody hits perfectly as the song goes into the chorus. Again, it might be described as showmanship. You know, we all know a magician who makes someone disappear on one part of the stage and reappear somewhere else isn't really doing that. There's a sleight of hand, isn't there, in the performance. There's a performative acting that goes on that makes the whole show a bit more entertaining but is that what this is does the audience know that or will many leave that gig thinking the illusion was real this guy is literally a wizard these are questions worth pondering you know what are we willing to tolerate to accept to amplify in this example again i would love to hear him maybe say like look you know we're working on a new song this is a new song we're ironing bits out at the moment 
I'm worried how this will go. It could go terribly wrong, but we want to share it with you anyway. Like, that's fine. That's cool. In fact, I think that comes across as more impressive because as it is, there's an unintentional undermining of his creative process. If his band can follow a song he's writing on the fly in this way, they can only do that because he has a formula for writing songs. And this is essentially write by numbers. You know, oh, we're going to go to that chord in the chorus at this point because that's how all his songs go. It's as if churning out tracks like this is supposed to be more impressive than rolling up your sleeves and chipping away to excavate the song within the slab of rock over time. So why the stage-managed creative deception? The other problem is it sets impossible standards. Like the vocal coach who pitch corrects vocal exercises, making them impossible to actually emulate. Does that help the confidence of those following? To follow their own creative path, to feel confident in exploring their own creative voice? Oh, I can never be as good as them. Of course not. They're not as good as the perception they want you to have of them because that perception isn't true and it can never be true. It normalizes, it rewards, it encourages fake, egoic, performative displays. Another trend that Phil points out is kind of retroactive pitch correction, which is being applied to many old performances and records, likely without the knowledge of the artists. Um, there's, there's one, Celine Dion, had her live vocals corrected. Uh, and you can really tell, like it's very obvious. This is one of many videos of music being re-released with pitch correction added. Artists like the Eagles, uh, Art Garfunkel, among others, have had their voices put through pitch correction software pretty needlessly, I would say. You know, old records are then being re-released with the imperfections, aka the like the character <laughs> ironed out of them. You know, whoever listens to Art Garfunkel singing thinks, I know what this needs. And what we start to hear is a, a smushing homogenization of vocals. I don't think it's just my ears that find it increasingly challenging to tell certain singers apart. This is where the most significant philosophical question comes for me. When we judge good vocals as vocals that are splatted to the lines on the grid, computerized, mechanized, we lose sight of what really makes a compelling voice. The character, the expression, the tone, the imperfections that naturally come through the human expression. When we over-perfect humans, we lose our connection with them. The emotion fades, the sense of vulnerability, fragility, teetering edge beauty. Why would we want everyone to sound the same? It's not when we're becoming more alike that a community flourishes. It's when we allow, when we enjoy, when we encourage, when we celebrate our differences that the creative human spirit flies. Progress isn't the pursuit of perfection. It's the invitation to what is alive, what is needed, what is present right now from moment to moment. We should invite all aspects of who we are rather than ironing them out in a way so that everybody becomes the same bland robotic productivity focused machine that no longer displays unique tonal sounds, oddities and funny ways of expressing themselves. Those parts of ourselves feel vulnerable. It's the stuff that makes us kind of self-conscious, stuff that we might want to tamp down and hide away. But it's those very parts of who we are and how our sound comes out of our various voice boxes, you know, whether it's the way that we sing, literally, or the way that we kind of show up in our workplaces, conduct ourselves in relationships, express ourselves when we're speaking. These things that bring meaning to the world through our unique way of showing up in it. If we lack confidence or we're a little unsure of ourselves, it doesn't take much to convince us of the benefits of pitch correction, whether literal or proverbial. But we need producers around us, people who instill, encourage the confidence in the imperfect idiosyncrasies, who can help build our confidence in our voice, not to correct it so that it sounds the same as everybody else's. But there are so many of these other producers in every walk of life who want to tell us how to do things properly. They'll provide technology, tips, hacks to help us sound the same as everybody else. Oh, this is the best way to make your whatever sound exactly the same as whoever. On the surface, it feels like that's what we should want. In fact, we do want it. We want to fit in. We want to be proper. But no, we want to actually, at a deeper level, hear real voices. 
unfiltered, unperfected, uncombed. That's where the true magic is. And in a world where AI is becoming, you know, fully integrated into so many areas and aspects of life, we need to be able to nurture, to celebrate, to explore what the human voice is more than ever. Just as a way of connecting, of seeing one another, of feeling, of coming into the present moment alongside each other through art, through music, through creative spirit in everyday life. You know, the best producers that I've worked with in my music are those who bring out more of my natural sound, those who encourage me to be brave in expressing those parts of myself that feel vulnerable, those things that I'm like, I don't want people to hear that. They're actually like, no, that's, that's it. That's the sound. That's what we need to amplify. Those people are good for me as a person. They're good for the feeling I get when I'm creating. And they're good for the results that I get to listen back to in the future and think, oh yeah, that actually, I'm really proud of that. They can hear those things that I would be ready to hide. I would be ready to make small because they're scary to let show. And so the opposite would be that producer who takes my performance and says, you know, I'm going to put this through the technology so that you're no longer there. I might listen to what they do and think, oh, wow, yeah, I sound just like such and such. That's really cool. It sounds really professional. If I lack confidence in my creative vision, my sound, my voice, I'm not going to fight to keep myself, my voice in the mix. We can all be that kind of proverbial producer for, for each other. Rather than helping people fit in and sound the same as everyone else, we can encourage each other to connect with and express those quirks that sound different. Embrace imperfection. Enjoy it. Encourage it. Celebrate it. See the opportunities to explore within it. Anyway, enough of what I think. What do you think? I'd love to know if you've watched any of Phil's videos. I'll pop the links below. Um, a big thanks to Phil for doing what he does. And may he continue to help raise awareness around, uh, around this and help us to kind of choose the kind of relationship that we want with music and art as we head into this next season of creative evolution. I've just released um, a whole episode delving deeper into this on Patreon. This is kind of like a bite-sized version of, of what I've talked about on Patreon. Come and join me there. It's also the best way to hear uh, more of my music and support the upcoming releases, which I do 100% independently with the backing of supporters like you um, so you can become part of my um, production team so to speak uh, get a whole bunch of bonus uh, podcasts videos uh, music philosophical nonsense all that kind of good stuff uh, so yeah find me over on patreon all right i'll see you soon bye-bye